Hey guys and welcome back to Motoring Box. On today's episode I'm going to see if I can have a bit of a poke around inside the piggyback ECU that's powering my BA Falcon XR6 Turbo. Stick around. Now for those of you who are new to the channel I bought this car about six months ago and when I bought it it had a worn out clutch so I couldn't drive it to the best of its ability and from what I could tell the car was completely stock because I couldn't really get it fully on boost. When I got the clutch changed, I suddenly realized that it was boosting up to and over 15 PSI when I was on full throttle. So clearly for a car that should have been 6 PSI, 5 PSI stock, something was up with it. So I did a little bit of digging around and inside the passenger kick plate here, I found a Redcliffe Dyno piggyback ECU. Now piggyback ECUs were the default choice for XR6 turbo owners who wanted to give their car a little bit of extra power and get it tuned. Because if you were an XR6 turbo owner back when these cars were new, sort of 2005, 6, 7, a piggyback ECU was really the only option you had if you wanted to get your car tuned. So yeah, back in the day around that time, this car would have gone in for a tune at Redcliffe Dyno, which is now known as Real Dyno, and that's a uh, company based out in Redcliffe here in Queensland. And Redcliffe Dyno fitted their RDP piggyback ECU, which as it turns out is a rebranded PowerMod ECU. See, I've been digging for months trying to work out what exactly is running in this car, and I've finally worked it out. So PowerMod, I actually found a website for them, runs on Flash, or half of it does, and you can only see certain bits of information, but it did give me a little bit of a background as to what this ECU is capable of. And uh, when I found the list of what it can do, I've got it here on my phone. This piggyback ECU has a built-in map sensor, which you run a vacuum line to, and it can detect up to 22 PSI. Uh, I understand this uh, piggyback ECU also drives the injectors directly uh, on this car. It has three separate auxiliary outputs for triggering extra fuel pumps or nitrous or things like that, shift lights, and yeah, it offers uh, tuning points in 500 RPM increments, uh, full data logging, nitrous oxide outputs, shift light outputs, VTEC outputs, intercooler spray, extra fuel pump outputs, boost control, launch control, the list goes on. So back in the day, I think this would have cost a couple of grand if you wanted to get this installed in your car. Of course, now in 2021, it is old fashioned technology and I really would love to have a standalone Haltech plug-in ECU instead of something like this, or even just getting a PCM Tech Edit. But in the meantime, I thought it'd be really cool. I was really hoping to be able to connect and plug into this existing piggyback ECU to get a glimpse of how this car has been tuned. But all of my efforts to try and do this were being thwarted every single step of the way. The PowerMod software, which I needed, I couldn't find it anywhere. I even tried to contact the guys directly through their website, no response. But as luck would have it, I actually found a page on Facebook and it was run by a guy called Ladurse. And uh, he's actually from a country called Reunion, which is a little island off the coast of Madagascar, of all the places. And uh, he actually had a copy of the PowerMod software. I'm not really sure how a PowerMod ECU made it that far, <laughs> whether they were sold overseas or not. I don't really know. But yeah, luckily he had a copy of the PowerMod software. He sent it straight across to me, no charge. I was incredibly thankful to him. So shout out to you, Ladurse. And uh, the only other thing I needed was a serial connection. So a serial sort of a COM port was a really old fashioned technology that existed on PCs probably about 21 years ago now, around the year 2000, late 90s. And of course, PCs these days don't have that kind of connection. But luckily, I found on eBay you can get a serial to USB cable, and that's exactly what I've got here. The little RDP piggyback ECU is of course lurking it behind the kick panel here in the passenger side of the car. So I was able to poke the COM port from the ECU out from behind that panel, plug the end of the serial cable into that, and now this one goes into the computer. If I can connect successfully to that ECU, I'm not going to make any changes. I just want to have a look because I don't want to mess around with how this car's been set up. I do reckon it can be tuned better than what it is running at the moment, but I don't want to launch my engine. I don't want to damage any components or anything uh, from tuning my car incorrectly. That's what tuners do. That's what they're trained for. That's what we pay them for. But yeah, I definitely love to have a look and see how this one's been tuned. So let's check it out. All right, guys, so I've got my laptop here. Let's get it all fired up and have a look at this app. I really hope I can connect successfully to this ECU. If not, this whole video is going to be a failure. And we've had some really shit weather here this weekend in Queensland. 
So I must apologize in advance. You know, this is the only video I'm putting out this week and I know it's been, I know it's probably gonna be a bit of a short one. So terribly sorry about that. So I'm just firing up the PowerMod software. It says it is unable to communicate on the COM port. That's okay, haven't got it plugged in yet. So what I'll do for now, we've got the option of going online, but what I'm gonna do first is go offline just so we can have a look. So look at that, that's the PowerMod software. So we've got our throttle position, it's looking at manifold pressure, injector, ignition charge, engine RPM, all the different readout for these sensors. We've got our fuel map. So yeah, look, that looks pretty interesting to me. So let's plug in our little USB cable and see how we go with it. Always plug this, <laughs> always plug these in the wrong way around. All right, finally found the hole. And hopefully we can go online. Warning, in incompatible firmware. Okay, can we proceed? Okay, we're online. So even though this software is apparently incompatible with my ECU version, it does seem to be online. So let's have a bit of a look. So straight away we can see our fuel map. And I guess the interesting thing about a piggyback ECU is it seems to not really be looking at absolute figures. It's more of a percentage change because it's taking the output from the stock ECU and then it's sort of altering those figures. So when you're looking at the fuel map, it is all in percentage change. So this thing looks like it's been set up up to 7,000 RPM. And as you can see, we've got our engine load in PSI along the bottom here. And it seems that, uh, yeah, obviously when it hits boost, the figures are rising goes all the way up to 23.2 psi okay i'm not an expert so i can't really interpret much beyond that let's have a little poke through let me try the throttle yeah okay so the throttle's working correctly as you would hope <laughs> uh configuration let's have a look in the configuration main setup so the piggyback ecu does have a little map sensor port and there is a T-piece uh, on one of my vacuum lines which comes through the dash and then hooks into that uh, map sensor on the piggyback ECU. So that's where it's getting that from. PSI, safety overboost cutout at 300 kPa. What is that even? KPA is kilopascals, of course. So 300 kPa to PSI. So the safety cutout is at 43 PSI, okay. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't sound right but anyway uh, we're not inverting the throttle position sensor the air fuel ratio meter is not used boost control mode rpm launch control i'm gonna leave that alone and fuel mode is disabled okay so we don't need to calibrate the throttle that seems to be calibrated just fine com port is just what com port on the computer you're using online offline maps so I guess that's gonna to change to our fuel map. Oh, that's what we're on, ignition map. Tell you what, if any of you guys tune cars and you have any comments to make on how this car has been tuned, I mean, I suppose you'd have no idea unless you had it on a dyno and you could actually uh, see how the engine's running. But yeah, if you, uh, if you see anything here that looks strange, do let me know. So again, this is the ignition map, degrees changed. Um, based on what the stock EC is putting out and then this is changing it by these figures here. So it's dialing out the ignition map as the RPMs and the load rise. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Boost control. Boost control, okay. So this is a percent of duty cycle. So rather than a PSI figure, we're just talking duty cycle. So I guess, I don't really know much about tuning, but I guess that means whatever the maximum boost is this turbo can throw out, that's a percentage of that figure. So unless you know what this thing's hitting on 100% duty cycle, you don't really know uh, what boost you're going to get using these figures. Yeah, look, it's going from 71% to up to 83%. Once you hit 4,000 RPM, it's hitting 83%. I've only seen up to around 15 PSI in the gauge, so maybe that's where the full 15 comes in, around 4,000 RPM. And then they're just sort of softening it off a little bit. 
uh, below that. I'm not really sure why. Is that just to save the rods on the engine? I don't really know. Mm, okay, boost control. Airflow meter. Doesn't really mean anything to me. Fueler. That doesn't have... I think I saw in the configuration the fueler was not... Fueler mode disabled. So whatever it is, that's not used. <laughs> We've got a setting here for NOS. <laughs> you can add NOS per RPM. Map sensor clamp. Don't really understand that. It's to do with the air fuel ratio. And throttle position sensor control. Oh, fair enough. And we also have some auxiliary outputs. So all of them are not used at the moment, but you could uh, run a nitrous solenoid off your auxiliary port. So at a, at a certain throttle percentage, you could, uh, or a certain uh, engine uh, boost readout, you could uh, inject some NOS, <laughs> retard the ignition timing as well. Uh, we can run a shift light, which comes on at a certain RPM. We can trigger VTEC on and off at certain uh, engine RPM or engine load. It's pretty cool dual intake valve so i don't think xr6 turbos well, actually i know they don't have an intake valve in the uh intake manifold the naturally aspirated ones do so you could use that to trigger that valve at certain uh rpms intercooler spray extra fuel pump so you can have uh yeah the intercooler water spray to cool it down uh, at certain uh, boost levels or rpm and you can also trigger an extra fuel pump at uh particular RPMs or engine load as well or a generic output hmm. pretty cool look this seems old-fashioned now but back in the day this probably would have been cutting-edge software and I think I did see online somewhere an old forum post which was suggesting I think to get one of these um, RDP piggyback ECUs installed it was about two grand to buy the ECU and also then pay them to install it and tune it so yeah it certainly wasn't cheap uh, and we have a data logger as well, which is grabbing RPMs, it's grabbing yeah, your air fuel ratio, your throttle. You can see I'm uh, pressing the throttle here, up and down. Um, yeah, look, it's interesting. It hasn't really answered, I can't even stop that thing now. <laughs> How do you stop it? Spacebar doesn't stop it. I might just have to close the app. So yeah. It doesn't really answer many of my questions about uh, how this car's been tuned. I mean, it would be cool uh, if there was someone who could retune the car just to make sure it's running correctly on this thing. But I think the better thing for me to do would be to try and get this uh, piggyback ECU removed. Because, um, yeah, look, I contacted, they're called Real Dino these days. It used to be called Redcliffe Dino, which is the mob who installed this thing and they don't tune these ECUs anymore. So it definitely is old fashioned technology. The only unknown for me is how difficult it is to actually remove this piggyback ECU because I know for a fact that it is controlling or driving the injectors, the fuel injectors on this car directly. So I don't think you can just disconnect it, pull it out and assume the car's gonna run. It really would be great if that's the truth, but uh, I don't think it's going to be that easy, <laughs> that's for sure. So yeah, look, I find that all fairly fascinating. I know it's outdated hardware and software in 2021. You know, if you're tuning a XR6 Turbo today, you'd be crazy not to get like a PCM Tech tune. I think they only cost about a thousand bucks because you're using the car's stock ECU. It's just reflashing it basically with a new tune. And it has proven itself to be, you know, really good at uh, developing power you know you're not really at a loss you're not you're not missing out on too much compared to like a standalone ECU like a Haltech so yeah look old piggyback ECU technology like this one really doesn't have much of a place in 2021 unfortunately so yeah with that in mind you know I'm probably going to have to ditch that that power mod ECU in the near future I do want to, uh, when money allows, I do want to upgrade this car a little bit. I want to throw a new exhaust on it. I want to upgrade the intercooler, uh, throw some larger injectors in it, fuel injectors. And because I don't ever want this car to be crazy power-wise, I'm probably not going to upgrade the valve springs. It seems to handle 15 PSI okay at the moment. Um, so 
even with those upgrades I'll be doing down the track, I don't think I'm going to run any higher than that. So the engine seems to be able to handle it. It'd just be really cool to upgrade the car a little bit and then get it tuned properly so that it's running you know, to the very best of its ability on a fairly safe tune as well. I don't want it to be on the raggedy edge and, and risk, you know, uh, if I take the car somewhere stressful like a track day or to the drags or something, I don't want to be able to have my <laughs> engine uh, turned to shit because you know I've had it tuned right on the edge and I've just pushed it too far so it really would be cool if I could afford a Haltech standalone ECU which is available for these cars uh, it's really a plug-and-play solution as the name would suggest you simply rip out the old ECU plug the new one into the loom and then all of a sudden you have a powerful standalone ECU uh, which you can go and get the car tuned and has a whole stack of features which uh, I don't think you can even get on PCM tech so but those ECUs are about three grand. So unless Haltech want to jump on board and do me a solid, I'm probably not going to go that route because three grand can buy a lot of other parts instead. So yeah, that's probably the plan. Upgrade the exhaust, get a new intercooler. Uh, haven't decided which one yet. Um, injectors and yeah, maybe a few other things. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below what you reckon I should do with this car. Uh, and I'll certainly take it on board. I do have my plans and, and ideas, but uh, any outside feedback is definitely appreciated. So sorry about this video, I know it was a quick one, but uh, I was really interested to have a look at um, that old ECU technology. Uh, things have definitely changed and moved on, but uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a, a history buff, I guess, when it comes to cars, and I really love all that old school shit, so I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel as well. I really appreciate your support. Check out some of the other videos I've got on the side, and I'll see you next time.